When I woke up Thursday morning, I thought I was in a dream. There was a beautiful room with a Sai Baba altar at the end. At the other end was a table prepared for breakfast. A maid came with fresh scrambled eggs. Music was playing and a beautiful woman was walking towards me. It was Anjali. This was her new apartment in Mumbai. She and her husband Vikram purchased it a few months before and had just finished redecorating it. There had been a budgeon sing at the house on Tuesday and that explained the altar. Anjali's mother Gisla, who now lives in the village of Pune, came down to Mumbai especially to see me. It was great to see Anjali and Gisla. Vikram had gone to work, so Anjali and Gisla looked after me. Anjali called for her car and driver, and we were off into the streets of Mumbai. The monsoon had come to Mumbai. As we drove through the streets, I couldn't help but think how much has passed since 1981. Anjali graduated from Randolph-Macon University in Virginia. Vikram, her boyfriend, graduated from Duke University. In the mid-80s, Anjali's father, Diraj, died of a stroke. Geisler and Jasmine, Anjali's sister, moved back to Mumbai. Anjali and Vikram were married in California and lived in San Francisco for a number of years. Victor worked in Silicon Valley. They had two children, Raul and Tyra. When Vikram's father got sick, Vikram and Anjali came back to Mumbai, where he and his two brothers now run the family business. Anjali loves shopping, and she knows where to shop in Mumbai. Our first stop was the Oberoi Hotel, where we bought three pashminas from Kashmir for my wife and children. I had brought a list of items to bring home to my wife and daughters, and Anjali patiently selected the various pieces of jewelry described on the list. Next came lunch. It was in a beautiful cafe in downtown Mumbai. Late in the afternoon, we drove to a small apartment in Mumbai. Leona, a Sai Baba devotee, had a room devoted to provide darshan to all who came. The front of the room was covered with photographs and statues of Sai Baba and other religious figures. Many of the photographs had vibhuti growing on them. Some of it would form the Om sign or a cross. One area where the vibhuti was wiped away regularly and collected at the bottom provided the source of the vibhuti for visitors. This materialization of vibhuti on photographs occurs at the homes of many devotees. One member of the Sai Lahari singing group has this happen in her house in New Jersey. It's time to party. A glass of wine at the apartment and then into Mumbai for a night on the town. Our first stop was the Oberoi Hotel. There are two main hotels in Mumbai, the Oberoi and the Taj Mahal. 
the Oberoi had just added a new section and we started the evening in their cafe. Isla, Anjali, and Vikram sat next to me. Vikram's brother Suvia and their longtime friend Mickey had joined us. I felt like an insider seeing the young generation that will be taking over India in the next decade. These were not poor people, they were the legacy children of successful businessmen and women in India. They all spoke excellent English, were college educated, many in the U.S., and were now running large companies in India. Nikki's company provided textiles to the likes of L.L. Bean and J.C. Penney. Nikki was the middleman, guaranteeing the quality and price of shirts and other clothing sewn in factories in southern India. Vikram Malani and his brothers Suvia and Sanjeev were running Vulcan Furnace, a company Vikram's grandfather started after he came to Bombay penniless due to the partition in 1948. Vikram has added his computer expertise, starting a new division of the company, developing software for the internet. The singer was Dana Gillespie, a popular blues and jazz singer from Great Britain. The house piano player was surprisingly good playing blues. Dana later visited our table. She told me she was a Sai Baba devotee also and had recorded many budget CDs. She gave me her latest one titled Songs of Love to be released to celebrate Sai Baba's 75th birthday on November 23rd, 2000. Ms. Gillespie said she would be there for the event singing for Sai Baba. Our final stop was for dinner. People eat late in Mumbai, and I mean late. It was after 11 p.m. before we sat down in the crowded restaurant. The menu, in English, featuring Western cooking, showed that global taste had crept into Mumbai's restaurant scene. had a lovely meal and returned to the apartment quite tired. It was Friday. My last day in India. Anjali and Gisla took me shopping again 
as my list still had a few items, such as a necklace for my wife, and toe rings for my daughter Susan. Anjali and Gisela are two very active women. Gisela, who is a talented dress designer, runs a small shop in Pune, where she and her daughter Jasmine design and manufacture nightgowns. Anjali has two boutiques in Mumbai, where she sells the clothing manufactured by Gisela. We pass one of the stores called Papillon. Our next stop was the Mahatma Gandhi Museum. This was the house Gandhi lived in. His library. Bed, spinning wheels, and writing desk were on display. Also, there was a wonderful telling of his life through handmade depictions of major events. We next went to the Breach Candy Beach Club for lunch. It is a private club situated on the Indian Ocean with two swimming pools and a lovely restaurant. It's sort of Bombay's Unkwa. My daughter Susan spent a great deal of time here when she was in India. We returned to the apartment and I packed for my flight that evening. Gisela left to return to Pune. I dined with Anjali, Vikram and their family that's still another fine restaurant. As we were dining, Sai Lahari was performing at the Pune Chandra. Sai Baba gave the women saris and the men dhotis. As I flew back towards Frankfurt, I couldn't believe that the ten days had passed so quickly. 
Visions of so many different images passed by me. It was a wonderful trip. The Milani family were great hosts, and I look forward to seeing them again, either in New York or Mumbai. <laughs>